Hello family, my name is Chris, I am your Home Gamer Dad, and today I'm going to be talking about a kart-style racing board game, where you get to play as a large, over-the-top, video game-inspired monster, going around a track of your creation with all these different obstacles and terrains in the way, picking up different items in order to help you get into the lead or do other kinds of crazy stuff, grabbing coins in order to activate special abilities. If you guessed at all that this was in the Boss Monster Universe, you would be correct, because today I'm going to be talking about why I backed Dungeon Cart from Brotherwise Games. So yeah, I am a Boss Monster fan. I actually have a few expansions itself within here. As you can tell, it's not really closing all that well. I try to keep things all together as one, uh, but there's still a bit more that I need from the actual Boss Monster. I was a backer for Overboss, so I got this and then like the special inserts and a few other really cool objects that came with it. And then I just got Overboss Duels in the mail not too long ago. Honestly, I can't wait to like crack these open and show you guys Overboss. Overboss is an amazing, amazing game. And of course, anything from Brotherwise was like immediately in my attention, especially if it was in the Overboss universe. And that is exactly what Dungeon Cart is about. Now, I've seen people say, why didn't you call it Boss Cart? Or using something with the word boss in it, because you have Boss Monster, Overboss, Overboss. Boss cart sounded kind of weird. Cart boss is also kind of strange or whatever. I think that they, they named it really great, Dungeon Cart, because it kind of encompasses exactly what the game is. You are in the boss monster universe. You're going to be playing as one of the many different boss monsters that you would find in here or in duels or in the regular overboss or whatever. And it is a cart game. Very much inspired by other cart games uh, that you probably have played on a home console here and there. But let me tell you this, from my opinion, from my view of it all, one of the big things that made me back this game right off the hop before I even get over to the Kickstarter is that once I actually saw it and saw it played, um, I think it does that style of game very, very well. So why don't we head on over to the Kickstarter page right now, because you don't have much time left for this one, probably about a week or less, depending on when you're watching this, in order to get over there, in order to back it, and then, of course, see exactly what I mean about why this game is the way it is and why I am super excited for it. All right, here we go. Dungeon Cart. Round up some villains and start your engines because it's time for the ultimate and fast-paced turn-based cart racing action. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm not going to be showing off the video that's on the Kickstarter. Definitely go and watch that. It does a really cool, quick overview on everything that the game has to offer. Uh, but of course, we're going to be going through the actual Kickstarter itself, and I can talk about it a little bit more detail. I, I don't do that strictly for copyright reasons or whatever. They use music and everything on there. It's their creation. It's a wonderful creation. It's absolutely amazing. Definitely go check that out for yourself uh, once you're all done with this and everything. But until then, let's keep going down here. We have uh, King Croak right here in... So the thing I really, really love about the Boss Monster series and as I've been going through it is you get to see this really cool evolution of the series for each one of the games that Brotherwise puts out. So you have the original Boss Monster, which was very much that 8 16-bit uh, version, you know, the Nintendo, Super Nintendo. And then Overboss is very much like the next generation uh, type deal, something a little bit higher. Maybe maybe that would be more Super Nintendo. These would be new Nintendo, Super Nintendo. This one would be the next generation, Nintendo 64. So it's just like a little bit more of a graphical uh, up keep uh, for each one, making the characters look different, but still maintaining their signature looks, like King Croak here. And a lot of other very popular characters from the Boss Monster series are in this as well. I remember a few off the top of my head, it's been a while since I played, uh, but otherwise that, you'll be able to find one of your favorite characters regardless. So here we are, the basic way that the track is all set up. This is going to be a big game. I feel, I don't want to say this is going to be a table hog, because um, I'm not 100% sure about how big these tiles are, but this is going to be a big uh, space on your table. Uh, two to eight players. Eight players! That is a crazy amount of players that you can get at one shot. Um, I'm lucky if I find that many people at any time on my board, that's for sure. Uh, I really wish that there was a solo mode. I did see a comment uh, in the... A comment section for this that someone asked if they're going to be a solo mode. Uh, they say over at Brotherwise that they're trying to do a solo. They're not going to put anything out that they're not happy with, and I respect them for that. Overboss has a fantastic solo mode campaign in it. So if they're going to do solo mode for this, I want them to do it right. You know, do the make sure that it feels like all the other games, like you're racing in carts and everything, and that the AI works very well. So we'll see what comes out from there. Uh, ages 10 plus whatever. 
30 to 60 minutes. It is really fast. Like I've seen a playthrough of this already, and I'll talk about that when we get a little further down. Uh, but it does play really quickly. I, I can see the 60 minutes, maybe a little bit longer for your first playthrough if you have four or less people. If you have eight people, even if you have experienced players, it's gonna be more than an hour. But you know what? There's still a lot going on on every turn that you wanna make sure to pay attention where everybody moves on the track. Because even though it's a turn-based thing where you go, then the next person, then the next person, moving your carts around the field, you're still going to be doing a lot on your turn to reposition and move guys around the field. And of course, at any given time, blast them with a powerful spell. All right, best of Gen Con, Dicebreaker, Fendemonials, and Tim Chun. Tim, Tim is an awesome creator, by the way. If you don't know who that is, definitely go look up his work. It, very, very cool. Uh, awesome in the board gaming community, let me tell you. Uh, and then we have... Killa? Killa. I believe that's, that's Killa, if I can remember correctly. Uh, off to the pledge levels now. What I really like about the pledge levels here is you can just go very simple. Just go the basic game itself, which I believe is a little bit cheaper than what the MSRP is going to be. I think it's going to be like 55, 60 bucks or whatever. You at least will be able to get it for $50 here, plus a good amount of stretch goals. And we'll get over those a little bit later. But in the base game itself, you can see you have 10 double-sided track cards. You used a lot of them. So let's just go up here. I, I'm just kind of curious. Just off the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you get 10 and each one of these are double-sided. So not only are these going to be arranged in different ways, I guess, every time you play, but you flip them over from different sides. So you're going to have different uh, patterns on each one of these cards that you're going to have to deal with. Different terrains, different things you have to get around, different placement for items, things along that ways. Uh, straight up, acrylic racers are going to be amazing. I've been falling in love with acrylic standees lately. I think every game should have them. I have a whole ton of games that have minis in them that I would have rather had acrylic standees for. So with this, you get six of them right off the bat. You have, uh, this is King Croak right here. Uh, I can't really, that should be Killa, and I kind of forget what some of the other uh, names are. I have to actually go into my boss monster and pull them out in order to recognize them, but... You get six in the beginning. Now, it says two to eight. So where are your other two figures? Hold on a moment, we gotta get there. This again is just in the base bronze level. So you got that. Uh, unique dashboard controls. These are not connected to the acrylic standees. You can have a racer and a different control board here every time you play. And these are also ones that are gonna be different. Uh, the numbers on here represent how many spaces you move in your turn, and that's actually different on each one. Uh, it also has different, uh, what is it, um, terrains that if you go over them will affect you differently. And then, of course, just different uh, ways of accelerating and decelerating through stuff and everything. So each one of these dashboards is different, and you can mix and match between them in any way you want, which is absolutely awesome. Gives you a lot of replayability, and just a way to find the perfect driver cart combination, which I'm sure a lot of you out there who have played the game that is very much an inspiration for this know that that is half the battle for winning any race. Two double-sided boards to track racer position. So here you have a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have three more over here. So you got a lot of positioning here. So as people move from first, second, third to whatever around, you can always move the discs around that you're going to get for your characters to see who's in what place. Uh, punch board code, towing tokens and spell markers, hazard tokens. I believe these zombie guys here are like the bananas, if you want to go with that. Uh, they have bombs, they have little plant guys, they have oil slicks, so a lot of fun that way. Uh, epic hero tokens and cards. These are like a big obstacle that are on the field that will affect you as you drive along. It's a boss monster game. I wish that Overboss had the uh, heroes in the base game. You have to get duels in order to get heroes into the game. But I believe having heroes in a boss monster game is also like a staple. You want to be able to go in and take down these do-gooders from stopping you and having fun. You're not doing anything wrong. You're just in a cart race. Why are they even here to be jerks? That's why. Moving along, you also have... 36 spell cards. These are the cards you're going to be using in order to do different things. Uh, fireball here, I uh, red shell, we'll just call it that. Uh, I assume there's a lot of cards like that that relate to other items you may be familiar with in other games, but of course in the world of Boss Monster, it's its own flair. And then finally, the rule book and a racing guide. Hmm, you always need a good guide to racing. 
And that was just the bronze level. That is third place if you want to look at it that way. Here we have the silver level, which is second place, which is a lot more stuff than you would ever even expect to come at you for only $10 more instead of 50 and 60 bucks. Everything in the bronze level that I just showed you. And then you get seven double-sided void tracker tiles. What's really cool about like Overboss is that it started introducing different land types within the world of Overboss. And that's kind of a, a big thing uh, in the Boss Monster universe, I should say, not Overboss. Um, it was in Overboss, but it's the Boss Monster universe, where you have like deserts and fire and uh, villages and forests. And this is, happens to be the void. These are like a void, uh, weird, empty space uh, areas. Uh, and I, it's just so cool that this is just the first of many that we're going to see here that represent a particular land type that you can put into your track. And now you have even more options rather than just the initial 10, you now have 17 that you can switch back and forth double sided. So we even doubled that as well. You get, uh, what is this? Uh, Cerebellus, our big brain monster right here. So you get another driver. There's seven. And then of course you have the silver slicer silver level dashboard, uh, bonus dashboard as well, just so now you have an extra player. But there's more. You're going to go for the gold. You're going to go for first place. You're going to go for as many things as you can. I know I did. This is without a doubt easy enough to, to say I would go for the highest level for gold for $80. Less than 100 bucks to get everything that's available within a Kickstarter. Ah, yes, that is that is one of my big, big, big check marks when it comes to backing these things. First off, you get everything in the bronze and the silver levels. That is just amazing amount of content to begin with. Plus, you get eight more double-sided tracks. So 16 tracks of sorts. The Icy Peak track. How many of you are having flashbacks now about certain games that you've played, driving along on a frozen uh, track and whatnot, and just sliding all over the place and trying to get your bearings straight and just moving around. Ice physics are the worst, but they're also the most fun things to play with. And I think that is gonna be an awesome addition to the game. Plus more tracks, you can never go wrong with new, more tracks. The Brother Wise uh, Monster, uh, 40 metal coins. So instead of the punch out coins, you get metal ones like a nice hardy metal. And this is really cool, a dry erase leaderboard. That is like, you can write it down and keep your own stats and keep, you know, track the uh, information and everything as you're going around. Dry erase, so as soon as you're done with a particular race, uh, erase it all and everything and go back and do it again. You don't have to worry about a thousand pieces of paper or this, that, and the other thing. Really, really cool addition to uh, the game. And uh, <laughs> does it come with a marker? Can you give us a marker too? That would be helpful. A fun and chaotic racing game that brings the feel of your favorite video games to the tabletop. Alex Hart, I couldn't have said it better myself. How to play. Very, very simple base rules. There's a lot of other things in it that you have to kind of pay attention to in terms of what all the uh, different obstacles do and everything. But simply enough, you pick your card and you pick your racer. Simple, you, you find which boss you want to use. You find what one of the dials you want to use as well. Awesome, great, you got that set up. Put yourself into the position on the board. You want pole position the best you can, the best starting spot. And then you shift up. And every time you shift up, you move the amount of spaces that are on that particular uh, segment. So if you see here, it goes from three to four, so then you're able to move four spaces. Normally what you wanna do, and then on your next turn is again, shift up again and just keep going faster and faster and faster. But if you hit certain terrains or whatever, you're gonna be forced to downshift and then be able to move around it that way. So it kind of prevents people from just immediately going within the first few turns from 40 to, to uh, four to 10 uh, without having any consequences or anything like that. And I bet you there's other things that you gotta do as well in order to make sure that you maintain that top speed. But that's really it. You, you get yourself that speed, you go, and if someone's in your way, you can push them, you can turn to the side and you can drift around corners, you can play it close to the center to have the least amount of movement you need in order to get around, but of course that's where the most obstacles are, or you can play more to the center where your pickups and your power-ups are, all kinds of cool stuff like that, and as you can see right here, race like a boss, pick up spells to drop bombs, toss fireballs, or teleport into the lead, Absolutely amazing. You can use all these different spells and abilities, including your own personal abilities as well, as you go through it. Coins you pick up, you'll be spending coins in order to trigger those. And then of course, ultimately, you wanna win. You wanna be able to get to that finish line first. I believe it is only once around the track from what I uh, briefly read in the rule book right here, but I'm sure if you want a longer game, by all means, go around as many times as you want. Oh, I actually haven't seen this yet. Our family plays games. I haven't seen them do their 
dungeon cart playthrough. So I'm definitely going to have to watch that. I did watch the Tantrum House one. That was really cool to see. Uh, just to give you a really good idea about how the game plays. They don't really go into the rules very much. They literally just start the game and like, here, let's play. Let's do it. So it, it took me a little while to sit there and watch them play to kind of figure out what was going on. But that's their style. That's kind of like how they do it anyway. Uh, I'm sure as time goes on, we're going to get other uh, different videos on here that show you how to play. Actually, there will be one shortly, uh, probably the day this video goes live, honestly. But we'll get to that in a minute. Let's first talk about these stretch goals. All right, over the course of the campaign, we'll reveal and unlock new stretch goals. Check back every day to see what we've unlocked. We've unlocked a lot, so strap yourself in and hit that nitro. Let's see what free stuff we're getting. Straight up boss monster tie-in cards. These are going to go into the boss monster game. These are all cart related stuff. So it's like it, it ties the universe together that the cart like world was always in boss monster, even back in the original game, which is really, really cool. Uh, next unlocked was upright stand for every cart speed, which is OK. So basically what it is is normally it was flat on the ground. Now you actually have like a kickstand in order to lift it up a little bit, which is really awesome to have that in front of you and then be able to just kind of move it along and you can get a better judge on how fast everyone is going. Because I assume like in the beginning, like I said, everyone's just going to be keep going as fast as possible because you have to move your gear shift either up or down on your turn. And I can picture it as you're going around the uh, the board a little bit more. People are going to be moving up and down that gear shift a lot more than you think rather than just everybody going up at once. And it's cool just to see where everyone lands. Next is an additional racer because we can always use more characters for the game. This would bring you up to nine if you have the gold edition. Uh, Ravenous, that is who we have here. We have green flames, so add three firebolt spells to every game. So spells come in uh, packs of three, you know, one spell three times, you shuffle it in and you draw it. The red flame is the one that I believe homes in on the character right in front of you. The green flame is just a straight shot attack for whoever is in front of you as well. I am expecting there to be a blue flame, if not in here or uh, unlocked soon, uh, it will show up somewhere down the line. Uh, we did a stretch goal, which is absolutely amazing. 100 Board Game Geek fans unlocked two volcano, uh, volcano track tiles in every game. I believe these are single-sided. These are not double-sided, but that's okay. You're adding two fire tracks, so you have the ability to add two fire tracks to it. Uh, that's, uh, I, I just want more variety. I love variety in these games. Uh, this is something interesting. They are going to be... Um, uh, like tier specific unlocks that happen throughout the course of this. Right now we've only seen mostly bronze. This is the only silver that I know of. And as I scroll down, I'll see if anything got new added to today. But if you did uh, silver or gold backing, you get yourself another, another racer here, Lady Vix, the foxy lady right there. So just kind of another incentive for you to put in that little extra bit if you really think this game is something for you by all means go for that silver go for that gold get as many of these things as you can move it along push your lock with an all new hazard the smashing here <laughs> will you pass or be smashed i have no idea what this thing has to do but it does come with a dice to it i love rolling dice i love the chances of all types of randomness so this thing could be a lot of fun to try to get past Hopefully you'll be able to do that and get some benefits out of that. Otherwise that you are a pancake right on the field. All right, more dungeon tracks here. The Dark Altar and Haunted Library. These are actually based off of cards from the original boss monster, which is awesome. Just taking those cards that you've probably played if you know boss monster to the game, you've probably played them a bunch of times, you know, in your dungeon itself. And now you have race tracks that are based around those two cards. Such an awesome idea. Uh, social stretch goes 75 stories shared on Instagram. I completely missed that. I'm not on Instagram nearly as much as I should be a little bit. I had home gamer dad is there, but not as much, uh, but 75 stories were sold, which is amazing. And we get the graveyard track in every game. So bronze edition gets an additional track that you can add. Uh, and now we also have another razor here, Explodo, the giant bomb. I remember him, uh, just. Again, more racers. More racers is the best thing to get. I do have a favorite racer that was in a vote not too long ago about who should be like the next, I guess, special reveal or whatever. I want her to be in this game. I'm pretty sure she's going to be in this game, but let's just keep looking and see if she pops up anywhere. Uh, position boards to unlock seven to eight players, uh, two dashboards, and a rally mode. So this was something that was kind of shown to us 
in earlier in the Kickstarter where it said, you know, the, the positions and everything uh, from Bronze Edition, more epic heroes for us to run into and see what they do. We got the Cleric and the Ninja that are going to be trying to block our path. Three fear cards added to it as well. Uh, this is the fear spell that it does. I don't quite remember what it is. I didn't zoom into it to read it, but I can imagine it's maybe boo-like or so. Uh, Minotaur's Maze and Bottomless Pit Tracks. Again, two cards that were in the original Boss Monster and now have their own tracks here. Uh, another additional racer, uh, Clonus, the cloning monster. We have Social Stretch Go, three comments on their TikTok, unlock the gr another graveyard tile. So now we have two graveyard tiles, which is awesome. And right now we are sitting at waiting for two more epic heroes, the mage and the pirate at $215,000. What are we at right now? Well, at the time of this recording, as you can see, we have hit that stretch goal already at $215,000. Uh, nine days to go, again, as of this recording. When you guys are going to be seeing this, it's going to probably be about a week left or so. There's going to be a ton more things unlocked. There's going to be a ton more stuff that has been revealed and everything. And then, of course, more videos for you to watch online to get a better idea on if this is something for you. And by that, I mean all the various live streams that have been scheduled by Brother Wives Games to give you an idea on how to play the game. Specifically, the one I'm looking forward to, which again is probably going to go up on the day of, uh, this is going to go up probably on Thursday, uh, how to play, uh, watch it played, or whatever. Uh, it, it says it's a live stream, uh, see Judgment Card in action. Uh, I don't know if this is an actual watch it, like how to play with Rodney Smith in order to teach you how to play the game. I hope it is because that would be absolutely amazing. But I'd be also okay with watching him and other people play the game as well. Uh, I feel like they'd be able to kind of give a little bit more of a, a, a better idea on how the game plays, how it functions, and just more uh, insight into the characters, strategy, things along that ways. But there's a retail pledge option, but you know that's just for you know those that have uh, retail stores and everything, which I would highly recommend uh, if you're not going to be doing this on Kickstarter and it still interests you, definitely get it at your friendly local game store when it becomes available. And lastly, I got to talk about shipping. It's always a thing. Shipping will always be uh, one of the bigger issues that people look at when it comes to stuff like this because yeah, it, it, shipping is tough. Ship, shipping is tough for sure, but they seem to be doing pretty good with it. Uh, if you look down here for uh, US, UK, and China, Decent prices, very, very good. It doesn't really go up that much depending on your level. $10 for bronze, up to 14 for gold, very good. Canada and uh, Europe, also really good prices. Heck, even Australia and New Zealand, I, I've i seen these much worse. And <laughs> given at this time last year when it was shipping prices, this would have been 40, this would have been 30, like these would have been double, no problem. And then anywhere else in the world, yeah, you, you may go up to $50 in shipping depending where you are and everything like that, and it's, uh, the, the most I can say is, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, that's kind of how shipping goes. You out there would know who you are if you're watching this and you see these type of shipping prices. And it does make it a little difficult because there might be something you really, really, really want and the shipping just might not be there. Uh, but in that case, always recommend, uh, hopefully a friendly local game store near you would be able to carry it so you can pick it up from them and be able to get your hands on this awesome, awesome racing game that I myself am super pumped to play. And there you have it, Dungeon Cart from the world of Boss Monster. That, that might have been something also cool to put in here, just to like have the name of the series within it anyway, you know, Boss Monster Dungeon Cart or something along that way. You know, just to let everyone really know this is a Boss Monster game or the next in the Boss Monster games and, you know, what it is then. It's a kart racing game. So there you go, everybody, Dungeon Cart. I, I'm super excited for it because of all the different characters you can play as, all the different tracks that you can do. Uh, yeah, it's it's two to eight players, but if I ever get enough players in order to play a full eight, that would absolutely happen because I can see that being fantastic to have. Heck, I'm always looking for games that have six or more players to it. So now my question comes out to you guys. What do you think of Dungeon Card? Is this something that you are interested in? What are some of the reasons that you would or would not back this game? Are there anything that you would change or ideas that you have for it? Let me know all of that down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this as well. And I just keep scanning the comment section for Dungeon Card as well and seeing all the different things that people talk about uh, that way as well. I just, I, I think it's going to be great. And I think this is a great, uh, what is it, a bar, an awesome bar to hit when it comes to future 
kart racing games. And I know that they're out there. I know that there are other racing style games. I just haven't played them yet. So one more question for you guys. Some of your favorite racing style games that I would like to look up and maybe try out at one point. Just compare it to this and just overall see which one I would like better. I think I would like this one regardless because of Boss Monster, but hey, I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you guys so much for coming along on this journey as I discuss Dungeon Cart and my reasonings for backing it and why I am excited for it. At one point, I do hope to bring Boss Monster to this channel, specifically probably Overboss because the single player campaign mode of that is absolutely fantastic. I love it so much. I played it a few times. It's great. So that means if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Home Gamer Dad so you don't miss any future Boss Monster action or any other fun videos I happen to put out for you to enjoy. If you wish to support the channel even further, a super thanks is always greatly, greatly appreciated. Or you can head on over to patreon.com slash homegamerdad, check out the tiers over there, and consider joining the growing homegamerdad family over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much again. Take care of yourselves and each other. We are family forever. Gaming together. Strap yourselves in for the races, everyone. We are going for that gold. You guys have a good one, and I will see you at the finish line.